Dear students, now we are going to discuss pin diagram of 8085 microprocessor in detail. Let's start with the features of 8085. 8085 is an 8-bit microprocessor developed by Intel Corporation in 1977 using NMOS technology. It has 8-bit data bus, 16-bit address bus, Hence, it can address up to 64 kilobyte memory locations. It requires plus 5 volt power supply. Its clock frequency is 3.2 MHz. This 8085 microprocessor is available as 40 pin dual inline package IC. It operates on clock cycle with 50% duty cycle. Okay. This is the pin diagram of 8085. This one is signal diagram. Okay. As we know that 8085 is available as 40 pin dual inline package IC. So here this pin diagram has 40 pins. 1 to 20 in this left hand side. From top to bottom 21 to 40. In this right hand side from bottom to top. Okay. So let's discuss each pin here. We can start from this first pin. The first pin is X1. The next pin is X2. These two pins are used to connect with crystal oscillator to generate the frequency for this 8085 processor. The frequency is divided by 2 internally. So if you want to generate 3 MHz for this 8085 processor, we can connect 6 MHz crystal oscillator. Between X1 and X2. Okay. The third pin is reset out. So this signal is used to reset all the externally connected devices to this microprocessor. So that's what reset out. It is going to reset the outside devices connected with this microprocessor. The fourth and fifth pins are used for serial communication. So that's what SOD and SID. SOD means serial output data. SID means serial input data. Okay. So the next 5 pins 6 to 10. These are used for interrupts. 8085 has 5 interrupts. Trap, RST 7.5, RST 6.5, RST 5.5 and INTR. Okay. So here RST represents the restart for this microprocessor. So next INTR. INTR means interrupt request. Okay. The 5 interrupts are located from 6 to 10th pins. Okay. So next one is INTA bar. INTA bar means so whenever that 8085 processor is receiving interrupt request, if it is ready to accept that interrupt, then it can send that acknowledgement. That is what INTA, interrupt acknowledgement. Do you all understand? So the next 8 pins, that is 12 to 19, are used for the multiplexed address and data lines. As we all know that 8085 is a 8-bit processor. It has 8 data lines and 16 address lines. In order to reduce the number of pins in IC, we have to multiplex the data lines along with the lower byte of address lines. That's what given here from this 12th pin to 19th pin. Okay. So we can have AD0, AD1, AD2, AD3, AD4, AD5, AD6, AD7 and then the last pin is VSS. That means ground signal. Do you all understand? So we have completed this left hand side from 1 to 20th pins. Okay. So here I can repeat once again X1, X2 for crystal oscillator. Then reset out. Fourth and fifth pins for serial communication. The next five pins 6, 7, 8, 9 for interrupts. So interrupts means trap RST 7.5, RST 6.5, RST 5.5. And INTR. After that we can have interrupt acknowledgement. That is INTA bar. Then we have multiplexed address data lines. 
So AD is zero to AD seven, and then the ground signal at twentieth pin. Do you all understand? So then we can move on to this right hand side. It is very easy here. So we can start from this twenty first pin. Okay. So from this twenty first pin to twenty eighth pin, this eight pins are used to represent higher byte of address lines. That is A A to A fifteen. It is very simple. Okay. After that, twenty ninth pin is S zero. That is status signal. Thirtieth pin is A L E. A L E means address latch enable. This signal is very important to separate that lower byte address lines from this multiplexed address and data lines. Okay. So whenever this A L E is equal to one. Then that address lines are activated from this multiplexed lines. Okay, that is the concept of A L E here. Then the next one is thirty first pin write bar, thirty second pin read bar. So here the write bar and read bar, these are the control signal to control the read and write operation. So next thirty third. Okay, so that pin is S one. That is also a status signal here. Next one is I O bar M bar. That is input, output, or memory. This pin is used to define whether are we going to perform input output device or memory operation. Okay. So the next one is ready signal. Okay. So whenever this ready signal is high, then the device is ready to transmit or receive the data. If it is low, means the CPU has to wait. Do you all understand? So it defines the state of this eighty eighty five. So next one is reset in. Reset in means we are going to reset the microprocessor. Next one is clock out. This is the clock for external devices. That's why we can mention out. Okay. One is HLDA HOLD. Okay. So HLDA means acknowledgement signal for this hold. Okay. Hold is used to indicate the processor that another external device is waiting for the use of this address and data bus. Okay, it is requesting the processor to access its address and data. If it is accepting that request, it can send that acknowledgement HLDA. Okay, and the last one is fortieth pin VCC. So we are going to connect the plus five volt power supply to this point. Okay. So this is the pin diagram representation of eighty eighty five microprocessor. Okay, so you can easily remember each pin, and this is the signal diagram. So in this diagram, we can classify the signals based on its operation. That is, first and second pin here both are connected with a crystal oscillator to generate the frequency, and here fortieth pin is power supply plus five volt, twentieth pin is ground. Okay, so next. High address bus that is A A to A fifteen. These are available from twenty one to twenty eighth pins, and then the multiplexed address and data lines are available from twelve to nineteen, and then the control signals. There are three control signals. One is A L E, write bar and read bar, which can control the operation of eighty eighty five, and then the status signals S zero S one. Input, output, or memory bar. Okay, there are two out signals. One is reset out, another one is clock out. So it is going to reset the external devices. Clock out is for the clock signal for external devices. Okay, next acknowledgement signals. Hold acknowledgement HLDA. INTA means interrupt acknowledgement. Next externally initiated signals. Ready, reset, in, hold. Then there are five interrupts: trap, RST seven point five, six point five, five point five, INTR, and then the serial communication pins SID and SOD. Okay. Next, we are going to discuss each signal in detail here: address bus and data bus. As we know that eighty eighty five has eight data lines and sixteen address lines. There are multiplexed address data lines for the lower byte of address lines. That is A D zero to A D seven. Higher byte address lines are A A to A fifteen. Okay. So the power supply signals are V C C and V S S. 
VCC is connected with plus 5 volt power supply. VSS is ground signal. Okay. The next one is clock signals. Okay. There are three signals related to this clock frequency. X1, X2 and clock out. So here a crystal oscillator is connected at this X1 and X2 pins to generate the frequency. The frequency is internally divided by 2 in this 8085 processor. So we have to connect 6 MHz crystal oscillator between this X1 and X2. Because the clock frequency of 8085 is 3 MHz. Okay. Then the clock out signal. So this is the system clock for the external devices connected with the microprocessor. Okay. The next one is control signals. There are three signals to control the operation of 8085. ALE, read bar, write bar. ALE is the address latch enable signal. If ALE is equal to 1, it enables the lower 8 bits of address lines from the multiplexed address and data lines. That is very important. Okay. If ALE is equal to 0, the data bus is activated. Okay. Then read bar. That is read control signal. Here this bar represents the active low signal. Active low means when it is low, then only it can activate that data in memory input output device. Okay. So next write bar. Write bar is also a active low signal. So when it is low, the data on the data bus is written into that memory or input output device. The next one is status signals. There are three status signals used in 8085. IO bar, M bar. S0, S1. Okay, so the combination of these three pins used to define the status for that processor. So 0, 0, 0 represents halt, that is no operation. 0, 0, 1. So here, IO bar M bar, it is 0 means that is memory. 0 bar is 1. Then the memory is activated. Do you all understand? So here S1 and S0 both are 0 means there is no operation. So here 0, 0, 1. That means memory write 0, 1, 0 means memory read 0, 1, 1. That means opcode fetch from memory. Okay. Then 1, 0, 0. 1 represents the input output device. Okay. So 1 represents input output device. S1, S0 values are 0, 0. There is no operation. So 101. 101 means input output write. 110 means input output read. 111. That means interrupt acknowledgement from that processor. So the status are very very important. Okay. The next one is interrupt signals. There are 5 interrupts available in 8085. Trap RST 7.5. RST 6.5, RST 5.5 and INTR. INTR means interrupt request. RST means restart. Okay. So the next one is serial input output signals. Two signals are used SID, SOD. SID means serial input data line. So here the data on this line is loaded into the accumulator when the RIM instruction is executed. RIM means read interrupt mask instruction. It is used for serial communication. Okay. So next SOD that is serial output data line. It is used to set or reset by using SIM instruction. SIM means set interrupt mask instruction. Okay. So next we are going to discuss externally initiated signals. The first one is INTA. That is interrupt acknowledgement signal. Next one is reset in. It is used to reset the microprocessor by setting that program counter is equal to 0. So next reset out. It is used to reset all the externally connected devices with the microprocessor. The next one is ready signal. If ready signal is equal to 1, the device is ready to send or receive the data. If the ready signal is equal to 0, the CPU has to wait for this ready signal to become high. Okay. So next DMA related signal that is direct memory access related signals hold and HLDA. 
hold signal is used to request that 8085 microprocessor to hold its operation because that another device is requesting the use of address and data bus. Okay. So it is requesting the processor to hold its operation. If the processor accepts this request, then it can send that acknowledgement. Okay. That is HLDA.